to honor America, would you now please rise for the playing of the national anthem? And now, to announce the visitors, the Vikings of La Jolla High School. Number seven, Tara Lawson Reamer. Two Western League foes, they're playing in the championship of Division Three, University of San Diego High School, uh, playing against the La Jolla Vikings. This should be a great CIF final match up in the girls' uh, division. The, the university team has been a ball club that has won the championship the last five years in a row, and they've been on your George Lang of Video Sports Production six year. This is their sixth year in the championship game. Sit back and relax and enjoy this championship matchup. University of San Diego High School and La Jolla. Let's start off with the Vikings lineup. It'll be number 11, Dean Ashley, the sophomore at the uh, forward position. Also at a forward position, it'll be Daniel Clayman, the junior. Number four, number 15 at forward position, a senior, Tara Lawson Reamer. Number 20, Shelly Whitney, a junior at the forward position. Now let's get the midfielders. Sophomore number eight, Elizabeth Brown. Sophomore number 16 at midfield, Crystal Hauser. So, uh, freshman at midfield, number nine, Teresa Overski. Number five, Ashley Morris at senior mid. Midfielder, sophomore, Mia Solveson. Uh, reserve, number 13, Aaron Morris is playing, uh, plays defender and mid at times. At midfielder, Tina Henley, the senior, number 10. Number three out there will be Lindsey Green playing the defense as a freshman. Also, Defender will be Alodi Otto, number 21. Reserve will be Erica Vincent, a senior. Defender, 
Number 14, a junior, is Maddie Morris. And a sophomore, uh, Shelby Stranger, who plays goalkeeper. And she's a reserve. And a goaltender will be Shannon Paul. Let's get the lineup for the University of San Diego High School at odds. Back in the CIF final for Division Three again. Kim McGee, a sophomore, number four. Uh, number six, a junior, playing mid and forward, is Catherine Estit. Number eight, Valerie Strako, a sophomore, forward. Number 21, a midfielder senior, Megan Tovar. Number three, the junior, Midfield Jessica Battaglia. Number 13, at mid forward, is se uh, the senior, Brooke Reinhardt. The sophomore at mid, Megan Shepard. Number 19, the junior, mid, and plays defense at times, Kim Parker. The senior, a forward midfielder, Maddie Clemens, number 22. Number 14, Juliet, plays defense, mid, and she's a junior. Number 12 is Laura Urich. She plays forward and midfield as a junior. The junior defender and also plays mid, Lori Giacinti is number five. Number seven is Stephanie Strocco, plays defense and midfield at times, a senior. The senior also defense and midfield, Jenny Benz. Number nine, uh, Jenny Benz is number two. Number nine is Brittany Warfield, a freshman new to the team. Number 10 is Leslie Smith, the sophomore, and plays the defense. And Bree McCann plays defense. She's the senior, number 11. The goalkeeping uh, substitute will be Julie Wood as the junior number one. And starting between the posts is Kristen Kennings, the junior. And now controlling, as you see going from right to left on your video screen, is the La Jolla Vikings. Going from left to right is the Dons of University of San Diego High School. And a Vikings right there with a free kick. Tina Henley, the senior. Henley sending it in, intercepted. And out of the Vikings trying to run onto it. Kicked out of play that time by number two, Jenny Benz. As I mentioned in the outset, you've seen University of San Diego High School on our George Landon Video Sports Productions over the last five years in a CIF championship. They're trying to win a sixth one in a row. All unprecedented in girls division three soccer. Up in the air, air control, and the Vikings come out with it now in the center of the field trying to control. Crystal Hauser bodied there, and it goes to the wide side. The Vikings still on a ball. It's sent in the 18-yard box and intercepted. And now controlled by the Dons. The Vikings still have it in the defensive third, and they sent it down in the corner, trying to run onto it there, and blocked again by the Dons' defense. It's sent up the field now. Here's Mandy Clemens. Clemens to the near side on the soccer ball. Clemens looking for her teammates to rush upfield. Nice play around a defender. Clemens advancing to the near side. It goes out of play. Knocked off the defender coming over to make the play. And so now the Dons will have the opportunity for the offense. Big try from the wing. Greg Porter, happy to be with you as this one ends up in the 18-yard box but is headed upfield and out of play. George Landman on my camera. No score in a soccer match here from Torrey Pines High School in Del Mar. Hope you're enjoying this one. Running it back on. Right there, Lori Giacinti getting it started again for the Dons. And now with some space and a shot and just missed the far post. Alone was Mandy Clemens and she just couldn't get the far post. But Clemens, a lot of pressure on a goaltender, Shannon Paul. And now they will get the restart, the Vikings. Clemens trying to put the first tally on a board for Uni. Here's number 10, Tina Henley. Henley with that goal kick, but intercepting are the Dons and playing it to the near side, and they will get the throw in. No score in the soccer match. Field rather tender because of all the rain this week. 
slowing up that soccer ball a little bit and not being able to have a good foot when you're a good foot hold in the turf out there and we saw in the division three boys soccer match a lot of sliding around players trying to go one way and just losing their footing so you'll see that at times here in this soccer matchup and here's a ball sent to the outside now and a block shot as Crystal Hauser gets in front of that shot and that shot of Kim McGee Kim McGee the sophomore and so now it will be because of the block shot past the goal line a CK corner kick they've had a couple of them now three here in the last minute or so this one is sent towards a box but headed out there by the defenders of the Vikings kept in and it might have and it was an offside violation so now they will get the goal kick the Vikings with no score in the soccer match on the under-20 national team. It's Britta. Tina Henley sending it up on a old kick. Running onto it there is Kim Parker. Parker being marked, and it goes off of Kim Parker. So, Elodie Otto will have the opportunity for her team on a throw-in from their own defensive half. No score in the soccer match. University of San Diego High School, coached by Butch Lee. His assistant coach is DJ DeJarlis. Team that was 28-1-1 on the season. And their only loss against a Orange County team in a Vanguard Cup. And they came, and in that tournament, they were able to beat Marina, a very high power in Orange County of girls' soccer. A lot of the players going to Division I schools on a shot there by Kim McGee, but a nice save on a low side by Shannon Paul. And Paul gets enough air underneath it. Paul looking for somebody to run onto it, but they can't do it as Megan Tovar controlling and it goes out of play. Vikings, a team that knows this University of San Diego High School team very well, playing in that Western League. And working their way through all the others to be in a championship match to get another crack at them. The fourth time this season. Yeah, let's see now. And Uni will have the throw in. Lori Giacinti from this side. Over in the corner trying to run onto it is McGee and a shot and is blocked on a nice defensive play. So actually it went off the side of the net, but the defense was over there to make that shot a tough one. And so now they'll get the goal kick as Shannon Paul tees it up for Tina Henley. Henley, the senior, getting it upfield, but it is intercepted by the red and white. And they do put the pressure on, but they lose control of it. And now getting another opportunity with no score here. At Torrey Pines High School, Division Three CIF Final for 1996. And you hear the reserves for University of San Diego High School making some noise on the near side. That time, Mia Solveson getting the goal kick. Intercepted and still kept in the defensive half of the field by the Dons. A lot of these players for both of these teams that played CYSA soccer 
from the age, young ages, five and six years of age, and work their way all the way up those programs and then go on to the high school and show their talent. And some of them still play CYSA soccer, the club game. And running onto it there is Kim McGeehee. McGee sending it over in the corner and a body there. As he goes out of play, trying to keep it in was the parade All-American number 22, Manny Clemens. Clemens, who plays for the under 20 national team. Fine soccer player in Clemens. Has all the skills all around in the game of soccer. And Clemens in the middle of the field trying to get something going. It goes by here to the right to her teammate, Kim McGeehee. McGeehee, who's had some shots here in this first half in the corner, putting pressure again on Elizabeth Brown, the sophomore. 27 minutes left to play in the first half. They play 40 minutes or a total of 80 in a high school game of soccer. McGeehee now giving it back to her teammate on an 18-yard box and trying to kick it in. And coming over there again is Shannon Paul and her teammates. And there was no handball or nothing there that created a penalty shot. Just good defense by the Vikings who come up huge here in the first half. Boy, a big opportunity for a university to try and get the one to nothing tally, but the defenders come up and cover well. However, they do get, university gets this corner kick, and unofficially this is their fourth of the first half. This one is sent to the other side to try to work the offense. Manny Clemens sends it right there to McGee, but they say that McGee was offside, and so the goal is disallowed. McGee was wide open, had nothing but a good half of the net to work with, but she was offsides on the play. Hey, pay attention, White. Face the ball. And so now it will be a throw in from the touchline, a far side touchline. The field, very interesting. It has a crest where it kind of peaks in the middle and then slopes off. That's for water drainage of sorts. Try to keep the field as dry as possible. Very expensive field up here at Torrey Pines is high school. As it goes off and running it down that time, the touchline on the near side was Lori Giacinti. Couldn't keep it in, and so now throwing it in. <laughs> Elodi Otto. And that was knocked off, and Otto will try it again. Otto looking for a teammate and throws it over. Crystal Hauser, and so now Muni will have another opportunity on a counterattack. In the last few minutes, they have been playing in the defensive half of the Vikings, which is what they want to do. And that's not a thing the Vikings want to do too much because it wears the defenders down. And in the late moments of the soccer game, that's one of the things that begins to take its toll as it goes out of play. Still no score in the soccer match. This one of the championship variety. And right now there's going to be a goal kick. Mia Solvason, the sophomore, who's had a good season for them. The Vikings. Straight through, straight through, bud. Intercepted, though, and sent back in. 
And Shannon Paul comes out from her line and makes a nice save as there was a number of players right around the top part of that arc, an 18-yard box, but Paul able to find a soccer ball amidst them. And now to restart again on a counter for Uni. In the middle now. In a corner, Manny Clements, always dangerous. Clements centers it to her teammate, but couldn't get enough. It's still in a box, so. And a couple of players for the Vikings were able to make the play and get it upfield. Still kept in and sent over, but there was an offside violation. It wouldn't have counted if they had scored a goal. But again, Clemens on a nice play, showing why she is lauded as a top player for her age in a game of soccer. Salveson. And Salveson's pass is intercepted by McGee. However, it is played upfield and with the body, and now the Vikings will have the opportunity for the restart of the counter here. To the outside now. And a pass to Ashley D. Clemens tried to run onto it, but it is knocked out of play by Jessica Battaglia. Actually, correction on that. It's knocked out by Lindsey Green in a substitution as now coming into the contest, number 12, Laura Urich. So Yursich comes into the contest for university. Bree McCann, a senior with a free kick. And Bree McCann sends a banana kick over to Clemens, but she couldn't get enough on that one. And it goes behind the goal line. And a restart now for the Vikings. No score in the contest. That away, Laura! Ball out of play and a throw in for University. Clemens tried to get to that one. And the ball is now kicked out of play and kicked out by Uni. Trying to keep it in that time was Yursich, and she couldn't do it. So the Vikings have control to the far side, and they can't control it as Watch it's kicked out of play. <laughs> and so now the throw in for University. Again, content to continue to put the pressure on. The Vikings are now coming out with the ball on a fast break to the outside. Here's the ball sent in the middle, trying to outrun the defender. But coming out and making a fine play is Kirsten Kenning. Kenning's a save. Hasn't had to make too many of them in this contest, but she came up big on that play as they had to fast break the Vikings. Come on, come on, Laura. Yeah. Manny Clemens up in the air on the air control and getting it to her teammate there. Yursich in the middle now, but a shot is wide that time by Kim Parker. So Yursich, Clemens, and Parker trying to work the offense and get one in, but the shot by Parker was a little wide. No score in the contest. And again, here's Mia Salveson for the Vikings. La Jolla has had to play a lot of defense in this first half. As again, the Dons trying to find the key to where they can put a couple of uh, goals in the net. Inside 20 minutes left to play in the first half. From the far side, a throw, McGee, and her throw is intercepted. And if Vikings trying to control, but they can't control enough to 
continue their counterattack, so McGee and company will have the opportunity to keep the offense going. And this one is knocked out on a nice play by Paul. And so it's going to be a corner kick from the far side this time. Unofficially, that's the fifth CK in the contest for the University of San Diego High School Don. And it's time. Jenny Benz will Who's blind? try it from that far side. And Benz, her pass is to the other side, and it is off. Tovar and out of place. So now it's going to be a restart for the Vikings with no score in the contest as they avert another offensive try as Sulvison We'll try to get it started. Players moving to the far side over there. As anticipation of Solvison has tried to work the offense over there. And the Vikings now again trying to put the pressure on a counterattack at a fast break style as they break out now. In the middle, putting pressure on that line to the wide side, trying to run it down there was Danielle Clayman. She couldn't do it as Kinnings is able to make the save coming off her line to that wide side. And the Vikings trying to control, and they do, and they send another one over to Kinnings, but Kinnings has it. And Kirsten will either elect to kick it or start it with the slingshot type approach, I call it. It's intercepted, and the Vikings still with pressure. A couple of girls going down, and it's going to be advantage. Uni and a player down for the Dons. And we're going to take time out with 16.47 left to go in the first half. No score in the soccer match. Coming off is Kim McGee as she was hurt on the play. And coming into the contest was number eight, Valerie Stracco. And trying to control right there is Megan Shepard. She does and sends it up in the middle of the field. There's a collision. Tovar trying to control, and she does. Gives it to her teammate, McCann. And it's getting a little bit physical here. And both teams still trying to vie for that first goal. No score in this CIF final, Division Three girls soccer. Hope you're enjoying this one from Torrey Pines High School. The Falcon Field here in Del Mar. From the far side, the counterattack for University, but it is derailed there as the Vikings control, but they can't keep control long as University has it again. And it kind of spread it out a little bit, and in the middle of the field there is Manny Clemens with the body on the number face. three, Lindsey Green. And so Green will get the measure for her team on a free kick. A violation against Clemens. This, the restart there by Tina Henley. However, they intercept do the Dons. And Tovar has it. Tovar on the control. Tovar around two players. Sends it down and coming out of Shannon Paul to the ground and making a play on a corner of that 18-yard box. Nice play by Shannon Paul. Paul a gamble when she does that. Come too far off the line. If you don't get it, it gives a great opportunity for the other team to score. And as you see there in the middle of the field, and a violation against Clemens, and right there, Mia Solvison, they get the free kick. And kicking it out are the Dons, and so a throw in for the Vikings. Viking 
restart from that far side, but Tovar has it on her foot. Kicks it out of play, and it might have been off a Viking player. It is. And so the Dons, with 13 minutes left to play in the first half, had their restart. And a handball in the middle of the field. And that handball on Crystal Hauser, so it's going to be a free kick right there. Settle down. And it looks like there's a substitution as Hauser will come out of the contest. Surely not because of the handball, but she'll get a rest. And coming in, coming into the contest is uh, Shelly Whitney. Uh, and she actually had a yellow card on her. And her coach electing to take her out and replace her with Whitney, the junior forward. Trying to control there. And as you get a good picture there, if you don't think girls' soccer can be physical, it definitely is. And as the years go on, it gets more and more physical in girls' soccer. And you see it at a young age. As they definitely learn that uh, they can be physical just as well as the boys can. And going off the far side, number three, Lindsey Green. And she might have been bloodied on that plane. And they're going to have to bring in another player. No score in a soccer match. And they have another player take off the warm-up outfit. And come on, and that's uh, Erica Vincent, the senior. Senior reserve defender. In the middle of the field, and coming back to help out was Kim Parker. They try to pass it to Parker, and she doesn't get it, and running onto it there, and keeping the offense in the middle, and a nice save on a long-distance shot. So the Vikings try long distance, but Kennings is able to make the play for a goal save, and... The Vikings will try again to try to keep it going. However, the Dons with control right now. I'll settle the ball, Laura. In the corner now, Clemens with a shot and a say a block there. And to the near side, and it goes out of play. No score in the match. 10-15 left to play in the first half. And both of these two teams playing good defense when they have to and covering well in areas of the field when they have to. And goaltender Shannon Paul has had to make some real tough saves at times as Uni has put the pressure on. The Vikings now with an opportunity to try to put some pressure on Kennings again as they dial long distance the last time and the save was made by Kiddings. A block and now the control by University and a long ball is played in the corner now running after it is Shepard. Megan Shepard, the sophomore, gives it back to Clemens and Clemens could not give it back to Shepard as she put a little bit too much English on the ball and it went out of play. Midfield drop. So it's going to be a goal kick now for the Vikings. Don't let them out, White. And of course, Mia Solvison, the sophomore, will do it again. Well, I'll tell you, this Viking team is a rather young team. They're going to be around putting pressure for some years to come to try to win this CIF championship as they are doing today. They've got a number of sophomores and freshmen on this ball club. Very few seniors. Up, 
A long ball played in the corner, and it goes out. And we're down close to eight minutes, but that's not counting the injury time in the contest of the first half. No score yet, as University will have the throw-in in their own half of the field. Lori Giacinti with the throw-in. Clemens up in the air to try to keep it going on a turn. However, it was intercepted and sent in the corner now as the Vikings trying to keep the pressure on. And Tovar goes down as Danielle Clayman putting pressure on. And towards the goaltender, and Kinnings is able to make the save. And I believe that shot was by Elodie Otto. Otto now off of Tovar and now goes to the wide side. And a defender running back, but now the Vikings winning it. And a little bit of space momentarily, but of course, University was able to make the play. And as you see, Clemens in the middle of the field. Always dangerous if Clemens has some space. Here comes Clemens. She shoots and Paul comes out and makes a save. But Clemens goes after the rebound and a block again. A tremendous bit of defense. A ball up in the air in the 18-yard box. And Paul, and they score. But hold on, hold on. There was a pushing violation against University. Paul made a great save, and then her teammates are able to cover well and make the play on that sequence. Clemens coming down, being able to beat the defenders, and you see the talent that she has. But the defense of the Vikings able to come up big again. And so they restart here. Tovar are to the near side there was Giacini in the middle of the field now. And both teams trying to see how they want to do the restart to the near side. Intercepted and sent in by Ashley Morse. But the defense is able to control for Uni. Tovar still working hard, but the pressure being put on by the Vikings. And so they get the measure of a offensive try here. Daniel Clayman, here's the shot. Blocked. Shepard now gives it over to Clemens, and Clemens goes down hard as both the defenders converge. And there might be a yellow card coming out for somebody. And a yellow card coming out, and I believe it was for number three, Lindsey Green. And so now they get an opportunity for a free kick. Over number 10. Bree McCann with a free kick. No score in the match. <laughs> and Clemens again with their speed creating the opportunity. McCann towards the 18-yard box is intercepted, though. And the Vikings trying to walk out with it as they do in the middle of the field now. And a counter going to the outside with a lot of speed trying to run onto it there. And it goes off of the Uni defender. And so now they're going to get the opportunity as a throw in. And they cannot control, so back comes University now. Yursich trying to control, and Yursich bump there. And it will be a throw in for the Vikings. Down inside, four minutes left to play in the first half. Somewhat physical at times as both teams trying to show that they can play physical as well as skillful. And a shot and just missed as staying after it on that play was Megan Shepard. Shepard showing that she can be a very, very tenacious player and staying with that play. What, what is, is 
And here's a goal kick now. My Solvesen, but intercepted again. And there's Clemens again. Clemens in the middle. Work the offense to the outside now. Try to give it back to Clemens, but is intercepted there on a nice job by Henley. A couple of girls going down. And here's a long ball trying to get back to it now and doing that. With Stephanie Straco. Straco sending it up in the air. However, back with it are the Vikings, and it is sent to the outside. Out of play, the substitution now. Factor comes into play again for University as they sent in number three, Jessica Battaglia. And also coming in is Valerie Straco. The Vikings on their counterattack. And that ball is played over and winning it again is Clements. Clements to her teammate and running back to play it there is Henley. Henley under a lot of pressure. All she could do is get it out of play and so now at least her teammates can get back and help out. And ball. And ball. This one sent over and Paul comes off the line again getting in the air to make the saves here in the first half and Paul has really done a job in that goal net and she's had to because the Dons have put a lot of pressure and they put some nice shots in and around her 18 yard box. Time running down to the last minute not counting the injury time which we've had a couple of injuries in the first half. Time kept on the field. Elodie Otto. Otto's throw is intercepted quickly and Clemens trying to break. And she sends a nice ball to the outside and running onto it and shooting it and it's to the other side as Juliet could not keep it in the middle. However, her teammates keep it in play as the Dons trying to put one in the net here before the end of the first half and the Vikings trying to stave off that opportunity. And as air control by both teams and the Vikings trying to come out with it and they do with a lot of speed Elizabeth Brown and Brown keeps it in place sends it over the defenders Kennings comes out and it's in the middle of the field and they can't get anybody to run onto it so back are the Dons exciting action back and forth by both of these two division three teams here in a CIF final to the near side now trying to control Juliet out over to Clemens Clemens a pass behind her, and it was intercepted and back to midfield. Save the flag. Jenny Benz to the near side. Ben sends a long ball down to the near side, and running after it is Ott. Ott trying to keep it in, but it goes out. Ott hustling, though, on the near side and creating opportunities. However, being able to throw it in will be Otto. Foul. Otto, the defender, Foul. looking to go which way with the ball that would be the correct way for her defense to get a counterattack going. However, stolen away now. Almost a handball, and then it goes out of play. But Clemens says, I don't want to be guilty of a handball. And it takes some talent to be able to pull that hand back and not allow that to happen when things are going very fast. Clemens from an awkward angle, and he goes out of play. And moments left here in the first half with no score. And the 
sixth corner kick unofficially in a first half for University. And this one is tore in the 18-yard box up in the air. The Vikings trying to control. And that is the double whistle signifying the end of the first half with the score here in Torrey Pines High School, the Falcon Field, Division Three Girls CIF Championship. There's no score yet for the Dons of University of San Diego High School, and the Vikings don't have any score either after the first 40 minutes of play. We'll be right back. On the second half of action, University of San Diego High School going from right to left on your video screen, and the La Jolla Vikings going from left to right. Maddie Clemens in the middle, and Clemens sends it down. But Shannon Paul, who played a first half outstandingly, and goal between the post for the Vikings, making the save and sending it out to the right. But again, the Vikings have to play defense as the Dons with a counterattack here in their half of the field. And they spent a good duration of that first half in the defensive half. And here's a shot, but Paul is able to make the save. University tied in a coach's poll, a girls' soccer, the number one team in a county with San Diego. And we go over those uh, rankings. They had uh, San Diego uh, tied with Uni and then Benita Vista followed by Valhalla, Mount Carmel, the Torrey Pines from right here in their own home field to play some good soccer. San Pasquale, as this one is sent up in the middle, Granite Hills and Poway, and then the others in the other competition beyond the first 10, the top 10, as that one hits the goal post and bounces off to the left, like as if somebody was trying to make a field goal, is the La Jolla Vikings. La Jolla being one of the others in the honorable mention as one of the top teams in the county and they're trying to see if they can win their first CIF championship in some years against a team who has owned the CIF championship over the last or here in the 90s 
and trying to continue it in an unprecedented run. But the Vikings showing signs at times of the speed on the outside and being able to put the pressure on a defense. But at the same time, the Uni girls with the opportunities in that 18 yard box have been tremendous. And the defense for the Vikings has to continue to come up big and not allow that situation to happen or otherwise the Dons will definitely put one in the net. As it goes out of play and so now the Dons again with an opportunity to keep it going. Clemens with a throw in and that's always dangerous. That's a one on one with that sweeper. But of course making the fine play there was Stephanie Straco staying tough against her alternate number there. Uh, come on, come on, come on, White. Uh, to the outside now, the Vikings, Daniel Clayman, and it goes out of play. As you see a cameraman over there next to the throw-in player and this one is picked up by Kennings as a lot of still photographers here I got a card of one of them who does a fine job and also you see this game on our George Landman video sports productions which we have done this CIF final for division three and saw university in it the last five years, and this has been a six year in a row, and a lot of these girls have our videos. As that one is kicked out, at the Vikings trying to see if they can be the team on a video this year that can win it all, but they, their work's cut out for them against a fine program. A program that only lost one game in the whole season. A save there by Kennings and trying to get it upfield to Clemens. Clemens missed that one, and you seldom see her do that. And now the action to the near side, it is still kept in as overrunning at that time. And so now the, re the restart as Tovar. And now moving it up, advancing in is Bree McCann. McCann sending it to the outside. And it goes out of play. Trying to keep it in was Julie Ott. And since it went off a Viking player, the university now still in control. To the near side now. Keeping the pressure on, on a nice play was Jenny Benz. Benz, the senior, knows how to do that. And she wearing a Letterman jacket with the patches of championship all over her Letterman jacket. And you only play four years of high school soccer and each year They've won the biggest uh, award in the CIF as far as high school soccer is concerned. And now with the body going down, a couple of players and the Vikings now, as it has gotten rather physical at times in both of these two teams, <laughs> given they're all out there and the Vikings not trying to show that they have any kind of give, but at the same time, Uni saying that we know how to win this one and, and we can put the pressure on you physically if we have to. So a big tug of war, so to, so to speak, in this girls' soccer championship game. And we'll go into overtime if we have to to find out who will win it, and if it goes down to penalty kicks, we'll do that too. 
And a correction on that. No, there won't be any penalty kicks. It would end up being a tie for the title. Clemens, a turnaround and a shot, and it is blocked to the outside. Julie Ott trying to stay on it, but uh, her defender is marking her, and they come out with the soccer ball on a counterattack are the Vikings. Tovar is trying to stay tough. And then a crowd at the far side of Vikings urging their team to stay in the middle. And here's Clemens all alone, a shot and a score. You can't leave Clemens alone. And All-American as she is, in the last game playing high school soccer. And you cannot leave her alone. And she just showed that no matter how good of a goaltender you have, if she has some space, she's going to put it in in a high school variety. And Shannon Paul just did the best she could to try to guess which way. And it's one to nothing, University. And that one scored at the 33 minute mark of the second half. And now the University can play a more defensive style if they want to just to allow that one to nothing lead hold up and the Vikings now have to really put the pressure on working hard to the outside is Giacinti to keep the ball in and is able to do that and Giacinti will have the throw in in the championship game in last year against the Vikings, the Dons were down by a score of one to nothing at the end of the first half, if you remember. And then they were able to come back with three goals in the second half and win the match three to one. And the Dons a team that is probably thinking the same thing again here, but the Vikings trying not to let that happen as they continue to keep their counterattack going, but it's taken away again at Clemens as her teammate wasn't able to come down the middle on that one, Straco. And with the body, so it's going to go in favor of the Vikings. As Kennings will see him coming down their way. There's going to be a substitution now for a university. When they get a chance, as play ensues. Next time it's dead. Nice move right there. Jenny Ben showing her ball skills on that last sequence in the middle of the field now. Juliet keeping it going and to the far side now. Advancing up the field is McCann with the body now. And so McCann a little bit too physical at that time. And the Vikings now will have the... Actually, it was knocked off of McCann's body, so it was a throw-in, so... And now the goal kick, or rather the goaltender kicking and getting it upfield is blocked. One to nothing, your score. It's inside 29 minutes now left to play in the second half. Still plenty of time for the Vikings. And obviously plenty of time for the Dons to maybe try to put something else on a scoreboard. That's why right, Stamp. On your back, on your back. And the Vikings bringing their cheerleaders this evening for this CIF championship game. And trying to root on a, the Lady Vikings, and here comes the Lady Dons in the middle on a score. A goal again 
for the Dons. And it's time. With the goal, Valerie Straco, the sophomore, as Valerie being able to dribble the ball well, create her own opportunity. And so at the 28 minute mark, the Dons score again, and now they lead two to nothing. As Clemens and Straco have got them ahead by two. By the deuce. And Clemens gives it to Tovar as Clemens gets it back on a give and go. Clemens with the dribbling skills is taken away though. And it goes off out of play on the near side. And from the touchline, it's thrown in again, and Clemens running onto it. And they say it was an offsides violation. And the Vikings defense not able to collapse and keep the individual opportunities here in the second half from coming into play for the Dons and they have taken advantage of them with two goals as Clemens trying to control can't do it as it is kicked out of play coming over there to help out was Elizabeth Brown Stephanie Straco, Straco right there to McCann. McCann trying to work it to Tovar, but it went by her. And the Vikings now with their counterattack. However, Straco has it on her foot again. Shut it up, stand her up, stand her up, stand her up. That's it, that's it. This one sent in and to the outside as it goes out of play now. Two to nothing, the Dons lead in this championship CIF final of Division Three girls soccer here in the second half. My well, warm-up's good, let's say. <laughs> and here now is the throw in. From the far side, the Vikings now trying to find somebody free and coming out is Kinnings. Set it line, set it line, Brooke. That away. Clemens showing her ball skills over to McCann, and that's off the center ref. And that works in the favor of the Vikings. However, only momentarily as the Dons come out with it on the counter. Clements to the outside, centers it, and gets it to her teammate who puts it in and scores Jenny Benz. And Jenny Benz makes it three to nothing. And it just looks like all of a sudden the passing attack for University is really creating problems for the defense as they are able to make it three on two and then give it to the right person in the middle. And that time, it was Jenny Benz. And Jenny Benz gets the goal at about the, just inside the 24 minute mark, 25 minute mark at 24.51 unofficially. And again, Clemens, Starting it from the outside. Three to nothing. University. Tovar up in the air trying to control. Brooke Reinhardt and Reinhardt over to Clemens. Clemens back to Reinhardt on the give and go. Looking for Clemens on the return, but it is behind the goal net. And so now it will be a goal kick. Three to nothing as they have exploded the Dons here in the second half just like they did last year and they are really beginning to feel that they can take another one here in 1996. <laughs> this one goes out of play now and the Vikings 
who really have to begin to maybe gamble a little bit to try to get something in the net. Otherwise, the confidence begins to play a factor in the psyche that is also uh, special in the mind of the game of soccer and in any sport can really begin to wreak havoc. Clemens with the header. And she was behind the defense that time. In the corner, the Vikings, and it cannot control, it goes out of play. Jenny Benz, uh, last goal scored for the, for the Dons, is going to St. Mary's. Or at least she's ticketed to go there. And there's a number of players on the Dons that are actually going to, as I mentioned in the first half, going to be playing in Division I soccer. As Stephanie Straco is ticketed to go to Cal, Bree McCann, La Jolla Marymount University, Loyola, and Brooke Reinhardt, Air Force. And they are wanting her services. Megan Tovar, the midfielder. USC, the Trojans looking to see if she'll come there. And Maddie Clemens is going to be the stalwart at Santa Clara. So a lot of Division I programs are looking to re get an opportunity for some fine soccer, championship soccer from the girls on university who know how to win. The Vikings, a team that is got a lot of underclassmen playing on this team that's made it to the CIF final, are going to be around fighting again as they were last year. As there's going to be a number of players that university is going to lose this year. And so the Vikings gaining valuable experience in this game as their goaltender Shannon Paul getting it up in the air across midfield and trying to control. Bree McCann gives it back to her teammate. And Stephanie Strocko, the senior, getting it upfield. And Clemens, the senior, trying to control and work another play as she had Brooke Reinhardt, her senior teammate, to the outside but couldn't work it. And now back, Strocko will have to make the play. Oh, uh, right idea, last leg. To the outside now, and it goes out of play, and so there's going to be a throw in for University. And of course that throw in by Giacini, it goes out of play and so now the Vikings will have the opportunity. The Vikings had their boys team in a CIF final and lost in a close matchup. And so soccer for La Jolla High School has been very, very successful in 1996 on both sides of the house. And surely enough, that will continue for the 96-97 season. As soccer in the Western League is something, a sight to behold as Giacini kicks it out off the body of the defender and she'll have the throw in. Clemens stopping the ball there for a teammate and she does get a chance, and Brooke Reinhardt, nice play. Leslie Smith, the sophomore, was able to get it across through one teammate, and then Brooke Reinhardt was on the other side, and it is now four to nothing as the senior Brooke Reinhardt gets a goal in his championship match at 1845 unofficially, left to play in a game. And now four big goals on the board. But Giacini played tough to try to keep things going from that far side to junior and has done that throughout this contest. 
the things just did not work in the first half as that Viking defense was very, very strong in the back line. And, but the pressure has continued here in the second half for the Dons. And now that same pressure has given way to four goals as it goes off and out of play. And there's going to be some substitutions for university as some of the players that have played to fine soccer and given a lot to this program and seniors may get a rest here in the last minutes of the game. Man on. Megan Tovar playing tough in the middle and one of the defenders goes down for the Dons as the pressure was put on by Clayman. And it goes off to the far side. And it's going to be a goal kick. As behind your picture, Mandy Clemens getting a bottle of water so she can go back in and continue the action. And the pressure that she has been able to, and skills that she has been able to display any action in this contest. <laughs> to the far side now, the Vikings, as it bounces off a player, and now they'll get an opportunity, a defensive player for the Dons. And so now they'll get a, actually there was a, a violation with the body. So now they're going to get a free kick. <laughs> Sixteen and a half minutes left to play in a game with a four to nothing lead by the university here in the CIF final. Ball bounces back and coming out there to get it is Kristen Kennings. Kennings a junior. And actually, correction on that, Julia Wood is in there now. And Wood, the junior also, will be around to play on this team next year as is Kennings as a reserve. So Kennings and Woods will be back for this fine program up at the university for one more year. And there's, here's going to be a free kick at Bree McCann on that violation by the Vikings. Brooke Reinhardt, who scored the last goal, and Reinhardt sends it over, and Shannon Paul makes the save. Shannon Paul's made a number of saves in this contest, and whenever they have not been ones that she doesn't have much of a choice, she has really been tough in most of those saves in the first half. But, of course, Uni has been able to unlock the key to that defense, and Put some goals in the net here in the second half as Julia Wood, or Julie Wood, sends it upfield. <laughs> Trying to control now the Vikings and Feet. is sent back. And of course, the Dons, very content to just play keep away here. They don't have to score any more goals. It is the Vikings that have to put the ball in the net. And here's some substitutions now for University. And there's going to be a couple of them in this particular time. As coming out now is Julie Ott. Ott, the junior, gets a breather. And coming in now, two players for University, Kim McGeehee. And also coming into the contest, Brittany Warfield, the freshman, first year on the team. And for a second there, the Vikings thought that thought that they had some, or at least their fans thought they had something going as a goal, but no such fortune for the Vikings. So now it will be the Free kick. Connor, Britt, shut her down. 
Clemens now trying to work it to Warfield, and Warfield was kind of waiting there for a second, and her coach told her to go out and put some pressure on a defender, and some things happened there for a moment. And, of course, being a young player as Warfield, she's going to be back and see some a lot more action, and she gets a chance to play here in this final matchup and get some very valuable experience. Bree McCann to Clemens, to the outside to Reinhardt, couldn't keep it in. Clemens, one who's going to create a lot of problems for those who have to play Santa Clara. It's players like that that have obviously made the girls' U.S. national team one that is one of the best in the world. And they coming off a double beating of uh, Sweden, the girls' national team, three to nothing. And they just continue to roll on in their quest to, even though they finished, I believe it was third in the World Cup this year, or not the World Cup, but the, world, the Nationals, or the World uh, uh, Tournament, that was. Uh, they, they'll be back again in Olympic play and continue to try and be the number one team in the world. Kim McGee now going to try to throw it in and does. And looking for her teammate, Clemens. McGee, a sophomore who's going to be around. 11 minutes left to play in a CIF final, 4 to nothing. University Lady over the La Jolla Vikings. Greg Porter, along with George Langevin, my cameraman tonight, happy to be with you here again at Torrey Pines High School, Falcon Field in Del Mar. And on the restart again, Bree McCann working it to the outside to Reinhardt. Reinhardt with her ball skills, sending it in the corner to Clemens. Clemens shielding the defender, showing a good soccer skills as an offensive player and still able to get the pass to Tovar, who got a shot, just missed it to the near, near post. And here's Shannon Paul again, who has had a fine game, done all she could in the net between the Popes. Tovar trying to control, can't do it. And the Vikings now. And a miss there. And Coming back to make the play, though, at the last moment is Elizabeth Brown, I believe, and kicking it out of play. And we'll have a timeout with a score of four for University. Nothing yet for the Vikings with 9.42 left to play. And being able to get up to walk off, but although gingerly is Elizabeth Brown. And Abraham Orrell, obviously worried about his player there, and she has been, has played well for them. If I said Eliz uh, Abraham Orrell, I mean David Banks, the head coach of La Jolla. I was say, Abraham Orrell was his high school. And talk a little bit about David Banks. Banks, who has coached this team, a former soccer player, and a shot and a goal scored. And it was Tovar getting the goal. Or was it Clemens? I believe it was Clemens and Tovar helping out. Clemens getting her second goal of the contest now. This one at the 7.54 mark. 
And it is now five to nothing. But as I mentioned, David Banks has got this team to the finals. A former player who was drafted by the San Diego Sockers in 1990. And actually, in high school or in college, he attended a, a club over there in England and was a, a captain, first All-American, a collegiate outdoor soccer bowl, and then uh, in the major soccer league's annual college indoor soccer showcase, he was named the MVP of the Florida International Tournament in 1990. He then signed with the the Sockers in 1990, and he became the first soccer to win the MS Major Soccer League's Rookie of the Year award during his per, uh, first professional indoor season. Played to the far side now as David Banks Club trying to get something going, and now another player down there. Ashley Dean. Just kidding. And we're back to live action again. David Banks over there watching his player attending to Ashley Dean, who went down on that last play. Danielle Clayman keeping the pressure on at Clayman. And Clayman behind a play. Got a pushing the player. And here's a throw in as the play ensues towards the far side now running on to it that time number 12 Erica Vincent and it goes out of play the Dons leading in this contest five to nothing yes he broke and now Julie Wood Julia, Julia Wood having the Opportunity to get one in her hands and send it upfield to get the restart. And now from the far side, with four minutes and 41 seconds left to play in a game unofficially, uh, throw in and they continue to move it up the field, are the Don. JB! And they continue to move it up the field towards the player in the post, Shannon Paul, who has played well. And now our team trying to go out, come out with it here as Mia Solvison now. Solvison being marked. Solvison sends it in the middle, but it is intercepted there. And so now here's Tovar, who assisted on that last goal, but taken away as the pressure is put on air by Tina Henley. And it goes out of play, and so Julia Wood will orchestrate another goal kick. Solvison. And our teammate, Solvison now, and saved by Julia Wood as running by her was Danielle Clayman. Clayman hu hustling hard, the junior. She'll be back for more next year for this Vikings ball club. So will Ashley Dean, who got injured earlier. And here's Brooke Reinhardt, who scored a goal in this contest. Reinhardt to Tovar. Tovar, who has an assist. Maybe she's trying to get a goal, but won't be able to do it as it's taken away. Nice pass, though, by Reinhardt. And that same play that you've seen there has been the one that has really been very deadly here in the second half. This one saved by the second all-team player, Shannon Paul. Shannon has made a number of saves in this contest, but five have gotten in the net behind her. And... That definitely is enough to win a championship unless by some great margin, some effort or something that happens of great 
notoriety by the Vikings to be able to come up with five goals. In a game of soccer, that is very, very, very tough to do. Unlike other sports where you can be down by a number of points and find a way by in a game of basketball, a three-point shot to get back into it, the game of football, a, a pass and a touchdown, somebody makes a mistake. In a game of baseball, a home run with some players on and come back. But in the game of soccer, if you get down by a margin like this, it is basically no chance to come back. Down towards injury time in a CIF final, girls division three, up in the air, the Vikings and the defenders again for the Dodge trying to keep the shutout here. Get out white, get out white. But content to try to keep it going again are the Vikings and Tovarn out of Clemens and they are coming, gonna try to come out with it and coming over hustling hard. The number 13, Aaron Morris. Morris, a sophomore who will be back for this Viking ball club next year. Clemens throwing it off the head there of Erica Vincent, who is playing her last game for the Vikings. Not the way she would want things to go. But she has run, her team has run into a great organization and a fine bunch of players in the University of San Diego Dons. Kicked out of play that time. As coming over and making the play is Ashley Morris, the senior. Another player will remember that she played in the CIF final two years in a row, but will not be able to win it. And must have been a violation on the throw in. And you can't leave your feet when you throw it in. So now the opportunity for the Vikings, and there might be some substitutions again. Let's see, maybe for the other team, the Vikings, there is on the other side of the field from where we are. And number nine and 20 coming into the contest, Teresha Overski. And also Shelly Whitney Oversky, the freshman, getting an opportunity to play, and Whitney, the junior, who will be back next year. Here in the closing moments. Straco, the senior, Clemens, who playing her last moments in high school soccer. And there's a feed that time. Of course, by Jenny Benz, the senior, playing her last moments. And they have been great ones when it's come to the playoffs and winning it all. Tovar, and she gets knocked down. Tovar, the senior, who again has had some great moments also playing for this university team. No, but that's Tovar could be a Trojan next year. The lady, women of Troy, soccer. Yeah, yeah. And she has visited their campus and was talking to them. Showing some fine soccer here today. Very, very strong in the midfield area. And here is the shot. This one is not going to be even close to the net. But Jenny Bentz has a goal in this contest. And that time just eating up more time off the clock, undoubtedly. As Jenny Bentz, another player that has had some great moments of girls soccer for the Dons. And there's a double whistle. And that'll do it for University of San Diego High School girls soccer as they win it in 1996, a sixth
straight championship. And that ball just continues to keep rolling in the right direction. And that soccer ball that we're talking about for the Lady Dons. And the Lady Vikings not able to come up with a measure here in the second half. They get outscored five to nothing, but they played very tough in the first half and they're a very game ball club and they'll be back. Good luck to the seniors for the Vikings and good luck to the seniors, of course, of the Dons. And undoubtedly, we may see these two high school ladies ball clubs battling it out again in a CIF final again next year. I'm Greg Porter for Jordan Landon with Video Sports Production. Hopefully you will be able to stick around and watch a couple of comments from some of the players that participated in tonight's CIF championship match of Girls Division Three. Assistant Commissioner Jan Jessa. We'll be, we'll be right back.
And we're here with Mandy Clemens. You just won another championship in high school. I mean, you're just collecting these things like money. It's, it's got to be a lot of fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's awesome. We're number one, man. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what has been the difference with this team um, over all the other teams, uh, you know, each year that you've played on? I mean, obviously, you've been uh, most of these girls you've played with. But, I mean, what, is, what has been the difference this year that you, that you would have to say? Well, I just think that everyone comes from, like, different club teams and they get, like, a different coaching. And so everyone just comes together on our team and just all the different styles, like, come together yeah, to yeah. form just, like, one, like, sweet style that we're just awesome, you know? We just beat everyone else, so it's good. you got to really be blessed to be able to have your health and stuff and, and, and sh be able to show your skills for so many people out there uh, through the course of the season. Um, I, I, I mean, you you got to really be happy about that. Yeah. So nice it's a good feeling feeling just right here play soccer in front of a whole bunch of people i mean let's see you guys uh lost one game tell me about what happened in that game as far as that the team type of competition and what happened well we were up in la and just the whole environment is just totally different up there i mean they're just stronger like more physical they play like better competition all the time and we weren't really used to that but i mean we gave them a good fight we had a lot of chances it was the beginning of the year and i mean I don't know. Just out of, out of curiosity sake, that's all that was. Other, other than that, you guys just had a, obviously a great season again. You win it again. So now you go on uh, to where? We go on to college. I mean, like seniors, that's all. Yeah. I mean, hopefully the team does well next year, and I wish them the best of luck. All so, right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Mandy Clemens, and good luck. You're going to uh, Santa Clara, right? And good luck. Okay, we're back here with Bree McCann. Bree, you played a great game today. Your whole team did. I mean, this, this has got to feel great. Isn't it? it feels wonderful. Six years in a row, all four years that I've been at uni. That's, that's amazing. I mean, you know, to be able to put each one of those championships on your Letterman jacket, that's, that's unbelievable. Yeah, it feels great. We're very excited. What's been, the di what's been the difference for you with this team? Um, would it, have you seen anything different with this team? Uh, versus all the other teams. What, what is basically the character or one thing that you'll remember about this team versus all the rest of them that you won the championship? Um, this team, we've come a lot closer over the year. I feel um, the past few years, I don't know, maybe it's just that I'm a senior this year, but I feel that we've all come together and we all know what each other's thinking and we all really can relate to each other and we get along really well. We're a team. Kind of almost like sisters or something. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That makes it a lot much, a lot more fun to play, right? Yeah, some of my best friends are on this team, so it's great. So you'll be able to carry that with you at what uh, college? Um, Loyola Marymount University up in L.A. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. Um, what kind of a program do they have? They have a pretty good program up there, or is it? Um, it's Division One soccer, and I'm going to be majoring in sports medicine. So okay. I'm really, really excited. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks, Bree. Good luck in the future. And here, we're here with the coach, and uh, you just have done it again with your girls. Um, this has got to be a lot of fun. Oh, this is great, uh, especially with this bunch of kids. This is the greatest team ever, Mandy Clemens and my other five seniors. Uh, it's the finest team in San Diego. I mean, we've been ranked with San Diego all year long, but yet San Diego lost to Marina. We beat Marina. Um, we we tied, uh, Ranch Bernardo tied San Diego twice this year. We beat San Diego, uh, Ranch Bernardo 4-1. Uh, 
I think this is the greatest team in San Diego. Of course, I'm a little biased and partial and everything else, but you saw them play tonight. They're, they're not going to lose anybody. When they put their mind to it, no one can keep up with them. Well, that's true. Uh, they, they definitely displayed uh, uh, a great brand of soccer, especially in the mindset of knowing that it was a tie game in the first half and they had to come back in the second half and, and, and do some things that they know that they can do. Well, that's what experience is all about and great players. Uh, last year we were down one nothing at halftime, came back and won at 3-1. I mean, we don't panic on the bench. You saw the first half. We were getting all the chances in the world, playing at their end, and it's going to happen. I mean, you can't put that much pressure on teams and expect them to hold us back. <laughs> <laughs> well, Butch, congratulations. Uh, it's been a great time again doing uh, the CIF finals for Division Three, And again, University of San Diego High School wins it here at Torrey Pines in Del Mar with a 5 to nothing score over a La Jolla Viking team that they've played before, but they had to do some things in the second half in order to make sure that they secured the championship, and they did just what they've done for the last five years. I'm Greg Porter, and I hope you enjoyed this one. And until next time, God bless and take care.